What's up, YouTube? So before we get started on this video, on first take, they're going to be talking about would Klay Thompson and LeBron James make good teammates? So let's see what they have to say about that. And I'm saying to you, when you look at Klay Thompson, LeBron James is at his best when the ball is in his hands and he's running an offense. You don't need another point guard that wants the ball in his hands. You don't need another big man to take up space in the low post or even on the perimeter. Don't get me wrong, that's not a bad option to have. But what I'm saying is what LeBron James needs most is a sniper. Somebody that catches and shoots with a level of marksmanship that can only be rivaled by the elite who have ever done it in the history of this game. The, the National Basketball Association, you have a team like LeBron the, with the Lakers. The Lakers have been in existence like most other teams since 1948. 65 years past, they missed five playoff games, five playoff appearances. Over the last six years, they've missed all six. These are the Los Angeles Lakers. What you're talking about is spanning history, decades before I was ever born, and I'm 51, there, there have been teams in the National Basketball Association, and I am telling you, you cannot definitively find five shooters better than Klay Thompson in the history of or maybe basketball. Any, or maybe so I definitely agree with Stephen A. Smith there that uh, Clay Thompson is one of the best shooters ever, but I don't really see Clay and LeBron James clicking uh, for a simple fact that just Again, there's too much drama with LeBron James. It's just too loud, and it's just too much drama that comes with LeBron James between the media, him being passive aggressive, him throwing teammates under the bus, and I just don't see Clay in that type of environment. Because Clay seems to me, I don't know him, but from what I I can see, uh, he seems like the quiet type of dude that just goes in there, does his job, does it very well, and gets out. There's not a lot of drama with him. You don't hear him caught up with controversies and fighting with teammates and things of that nature. All Clay does, he just does his job, and that's it. And for him to go to the Lakers, that just seems like kind of out of character. Not that he couldn't handle it, but I, I just feel like he doesn't deserve to, to, uh, to go to the Lakers and have to go through all that drama. Or should I say it the other way, LeBron James doesn't deserve to have a Klay Thompson because Klay Thompson is a blue-collar worker. He's going to go in there, do his job, do it well, and you're not going to have any problems out of him. I think Klay should just stay in Golden State, you know, where he's been winning. I mean, I, I don't see how it can get any more better. Like I said, I don't think LeBron James deserves a Klay Thompson. Klay Thompson is a little bit too good to be playing with LeBron James, but that's just my opinion. So let's keep going. And the history of basketball. Or maybe y'all truly do not, people, not y'all, but so many people truly do not appreciate how great of a shooter this dude is. And I'm talking about rolling off screens, rolling off picks, catching and firing away. Who better to have as your teammate than a 6'9, 260 pound dude? accustomed to running the offense and creating mismatches as his specialty. No matter what you see from Clay with Steph, and Steph is his own arsenal because of his ability to shoot. If you were playing with somebody that's such a potent physical threat like LeBron, what I mean, it would Clay Thompson would be heaven. LeBron James would believe he died and went to heaven if he had Clay Thompson. But you kind of have to look. What what incentive would Clay have to go to the Lakers and play LeBron? What incentive would he have? How how would it, how would his life improve by going to play with LeBron James? I like the Lakers organization and all that, but as far as playing with LeBron James, I can't see any anything. It can't get any more better than where he's already at. He's already playing with Kevin Durant, who's a physical specimen, and by the time he's retired, he should be the all-time leader in points scored. And as far as playing with another superstar, him playing with Steph Curry, the, the Splash Brothers for a reason. So I don't see why he would want to leave Golden State when he has everything there. He's about to have four rings, it uh, looks like, which he'd have more rings than LeBron James. So as far as winning, he'll have more championships than LeBron James, who will have plenty of money. I mean, so wh why would he leave Golden State and go and play with LeBron James? Because, you know, if something happens, LeBron James is going to defer to Klay Thompson to take that clutch shot, that final shot, because he, he doesn't want to take it. He doesn't want that kind of pressure. 
And if Clay were to miss, he would throw Clay under the bus. And I just don't want to see that happen to Clay Thompson. He's had such a good career, done so much, been such a class act that I would hate to see him have to go through the type of drama that comes with LeBron James. So let's keep going. That's that's a very good point, and I would say that Clay is in the argument for greatest shooter ever, period. Because back in the day, like Steve Kerr and these guys didn't have to shoot it as much as Clay. Clay takes so many threes, hits them at such a high rate. He's he's an amazing. Maybe you can the make an argument that ever. the two greatest shooters yeah, are on the same back court, yeah, yeah. on the same back court. And right for now. that reason, I think you can argue Clay higher than he ought to be. In other words, like Jimmy Butler is a more versatile two-way wing than Clay, who's also a two-way wing. And I think you can make a very strong case for him, but I'll take Clay over Butler simply because Clay shoots it otherworldly. Okay, but I'm not taking him over AD because Clay is a great player. He's better than a typical all-star, better than just a four-star player, but he's not an MVP. AD, when you talk about the best players in the game, and you talk about Kawhi and KD and LeBron, of course, and, and Giannis and Steph... And A.D., I mean, A.D. is right there with anyone you want to mention. And the history of basketball shows you more than anything else. Whatever you think your needs are, whatever, like the, the Bobby Knight line, right? Hey, Bobby, who should we draft? Michael Jordan. But we need a center. Draft Jordan. Play him at center. Whatever you think your needs are, if you have a chance to get A.D., he's just superior. So the answer, and by the way, LeBron making plays and setting up teammates, how you like a big like AD in this day and age? That's your five? Well, oh, ugh. well, for me. So I like AD too. AD is a beast. But comparing him to uh, Clay Thompson, it's kind of like apples and oranges. For one thing, uh, AD is more of a scorer than a shooter because he's what? He's seven foot. And what? Clay's what? Six, seven. He's, he's obviously, he's more of a shooter. So you'd have to play those two guys different. They, they, they definitely have to play two different spots. So you're dealing with apples and oranges there. It's pretty much what your team would need. And as far as defense, uh, like I said, they're two different players. You know, one seven foot, one six seven. But Clay does have that lockdown defense. But you can't really go wrong with the seven footer. So I don't know. It, it would depend on what you needed on your team uh, for who you're going to pick. But I don't know. It's just it's it's kind of apples and oranges, and it'd have to go down to what you need for your team. So let's keep going. Personally, I am in no way trying to say that Clay is better than AD. What I'm asking, what I'm answering is who's better for LeBron. And when I think about LeBron and I think about how he wants to run an offense, it's not to say he wouldn't make it work with somebody as exceptional as AD. But what I'm saying to you is what LeBron brings to you in the interior, what he brings to you in the open court, what he brings to you in a half court while he's running the offense, whereas he'd have to sit around and watch KAD go to work, he can facilitate the success of a Klay Thompson. There's a reason that Klay Thompson once scored 37 points points in a quarter. There's a reason why he once scored 61 points in 29 minutes. Because Klay Thompson doesn't need to dribble and create his own shot. He can catch and shoot. And a marksmanship that he brings to the table. And let's also forget, we keep forgetting something about Klay Thompson. Klay Thompson's six feet seven. Did y'all know that Klay Thompson defends four different positions? He's a great defender. Four different positions. To see, So we act like, no, he's not AD. Because few are. But we act like Klay is just a shooter when in fact he's an elite defender so only you're really saying that is Stephen A. Smith because the real people that know they know that Clay puts in work on both sides of the ball on both sides of the ball just like Iguodala not only can Clay shoot the rock from almost anywhere at a high percentage that guy could defend he defend LeBron James I mean how many how many guys did he defend LeBron James uh James Harden I mean all these guys he, he took care of business with he just quiet he just quiet and he's taking care of a uh, Kawhi Leonard too so I mean the, it, Clay Thompson could really do it all but what it boils down to I just don't see him being able to play with LeBron James I mean he can do it but I don't want to see him to have to deal with that kind of garbage and going with the Lakers when it's just so much drama I think he should stay where he's at where there's no drama everything you just play your game do the best you can they're in there the winners if it's not broke don't fix it and as far as Anthony Davis like I said it depends on what you need it depends on what you need because like I said Anthony Davis he's a scorer and uh 
Clay is more of a shooter in my book, and he can defend. But like I said, you're dealing with apples and oranges because you got one that's a seven footer that's going to be taking care of more business in the paint versus a six seven guy that's kind of be kind of be bouncing all around, but not as dominant in the paint as your seven footer. So I don't know. Let's keep going. An elite defender and one of the greatest shooters we've ever seen in the history of basketball. So if you're talking about paying him with LeBron, we got to take into account LeBron's skill set and what he's willing to do. But that's what I'm saying. In the case of AD, you don't. In the case of AD, like if if a team rolls into town and getting off the bus, there's LeBron James, there's Anthony Davis, you're like, "Uh uh-oh. Like Clay is great, of course, but AD is a different level of... uh, Well, how do you like... Well, that is true, but I'm sorry to stop it, guys. Uh, that would be true, but if you know what you're looking at and you're a basketball guy and you would know what type of player uh, Clay Thompson is and you would know what he brings to the table versus the AD because you know LeBron James is going to be taking care of 10 feet and in, in above to the rim. He's going to be taking care of what's going on in the paint. He's a freight train that can't be stopped. And if you know what you're looking at and you know Clay, you know Clay is that sniper that's just waiting out there on the arc to just drop dimes on you. So when you double team or triple team LeBron James in the paint, he's just going to kick that rock out and Clay is going to be sitting there just waiting to drop it. Just waiting to drop it. And that, that will keep defenses honest. Now, if you had an AD, they're both going to be kind of be putting in work in the paint and, you know, maybe 10, 15 feet out, they'll be dropping dimes. But I don't know. I think you it's more versatile if LeBron James and Clay Thompson play with each other because you, you cover more bases. But with the AD and the LeBron James, they both might kind of cancel each other out because they're going to be so dominant from about 10, 15 feet up into the rim so i don't know i I don't know uh i'll probably go like i said it depends on what you need for your team so let's keep going this line how do you like this line how do you like this line ad with lebron both would be successful they'd have to sacrifice with clay there is no yeah but i don't think they're as good with clay as with ad but I'll, i'll say something else there's another guy on this list kyrie irving and kyrie his stock has fallen a little bit but he needs to be with a guy like LeBron to, I believe, to get the most out of his ability. And I believe LeBron needs Kyrie probably more than Kyrie even needs LeBron. But they've already shown against your 73-win Warriors what LeBron and Kyrie can do together. So I would put... So I don't understand why Max keeps bringing up stuff from four years ago. So sure, Kyrie and LeBron James made a good run. They beat the Golden State Warriors for the second time after the championship. But what happened after that? It's like, what have you done lately? After they lost against Cleveland, that next year, they beat Cleveland 4-1. Then that next year, which would have been last year, they swept them 4-0. Uh, they, they, they were getting better. So I don't understand. Why would you bring up what happened four years ago? Why do you keep bringing that up? It, 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 that means you have nothing to argue about. You have, you got nothing. You got nothing to say if you have to bring up how the Golden State Warriors lost four years ago in the finals. For the second time in a row in the finals. If that's all you can bring up, then you got nothing to bring up. You've got nothing to bring up, Max. So let's keep going. Play behind AD, behind Kyrie, but ahead of everybody else on the this. list. I will say this. Here's the one part that you are ignoring about Kyrie with LeBron. And this is not Kyrie's fault, but I've always held this against LeBron. KD arrives in Golden State. KD and the Golden State Warriors are waiting for LeBron and the Cavs in the finals. LeBron and the Cavs beat Boston. And on the court in TD Bank Garden, LeBron gave what I consider to be a concession speech. He sat up there, looked into the cameras, and the great Doris Burke, the wonderful Doris Burke, the incomparable Doris Burke said, quote, you know, uh, you got, you know what you got coming up here? LeBron said, I, I don't even want to. <laughs> he wasn't lying. I just don't want to think about it. I just want to enjoy this moment, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And what I'm saying to you is when you.